episode, we're talking all about um, this research. Researchers have made a patch that you can put on during abdominal surgery. It's kind of like a Band-Aid for your intestines inside your stomach after surgery. To me, I was like, who in the world needs this? What do we need this for? Doesn't it seem like a little bit of overkill to have Band-Aids when we already have like stitches and sutures and glue and all, all these other things, right? Um, turns out it's actually really, really important. right? Um, turns out it's actually really, really important. So in stomach or intestine surgeries, um, leaks at the stitches are actually pretty frequent. It happens in above 5% of surgeries. Um, and you, like if it didn't happen to, or if even if it happened to 5% of people, but the consequences weren't that big, I'd be like, all right, cool. Like it's just like a minor complication. Maybe we can fix this pretty easily. Right. Um, turns out that when this happens, it's called, uh, I forget what it's called actually, but it, it can cause something called like perionitis, which is like swelling and infection on the insides of your body. That's like the same thing that happens when your appendix bursts. Um, and if you know anything about like appendicitis after your appendix bursts, it's an, it's a medical emergency to come clean up the fluid inside of you because you can get your blood inflected. That's life threatening. So 5% of these surgeries leaks happen at the stitches. 20% of those leaks are life threatening. So Again, it's not a huge deal, but the fact that you're thinking about, I might go in for a routine stomach surgery and there's a 1% chance of me dying because of it, if you combine that 5% leak rate and 20% mortality rate, um, it's actually like pretty risky for you to say like one out of every 100 stomach surgeries you go into are going to die because of leakage. Seems like something where we could come up with a, like a decent solution, like an internal Band-Aid and solve a lot of these problems, right? You're absolutely right. And by the way, I think the word you were looking for is evisceration. That's the one. That's the one. Shout out to Google. But yeah, man, you're right. And like, first I'm reading this. I'm like, all right, you know, they, they have sutures. And the first thing that came to my mind is, all right, we've advanced so much in the medical industry that we have glues now. Like when I was in high school, this kid cut his hand on a bandsaw, like blood splattered everywhere. He won. He didn't even get stitches. They put like cement glue or whatever in his hands and it just bound everything back together and it was good to go. Like, why can't we do something like that in the intestines? Well, apparently they did. And they came up with something that's like plaster that you would use for your drywall. And they're able to plaster it up. But the um, proteins, I guess, that they use to create that plaster react very strongly with the contents of your intestines or your stomach. So, you know, that's like the acid, the digestive acid that you have, or the, the food and the germ of the food that's like going through your stomach to get processed, which means that it can kind of cover it up. But at the same time, it's going to dissolve pretty quickly, which, you know, puts you back in the same place you were before, and that's getting compromised and potentially dying from this. So it's such a big problem, right? Because we can't patch this thing properly, and there's a chance that it's going to pop open. But what like as exacerbates that problem even more is that doctors have literally no insight after they close you up, right? Like this is a very critical thing, so they want to make sure they're getting it right, and they do their best during the surgery. But once you're patched up, they have no insight on like. If there's a leak, how big is the leak? Is it a bad leak? Can we do something about it? So I think what usually happens is that they just keep the patients for an extended period of time at the hospital, keep their eyes on them, make sure they're checking the vitals. And then after a period of time, be like, I guess you're good to go. And yeah, they want to the keep best. them to like that two to three day period because that's when the symptoms of peritonitis start to become present. But it's like, it feels like a really, really... um like a really, really blunt solution to a problem that could be finessed, right? So to summarize it, you know, when we have stomach or intestine surgeries, leaks at the stitches are actually pretty common. And all of those lead to a lot of additional complications, could lead to reoperations. And in 20% of those cases, it actually causes death. So it's a big deal. We've tried doing certain types of glues or plasters or something like that to try and patch it up. Works great at sealing except when it actually starts to leak, um, the digestive juices start to dissolve it. Um, and again, to make matters worse, like you said, as soon as the abdominal cavity is closed, doctors are completely blind to what's going on and they may not notice leaks until it's too late. Um, and things may progress more from like the, hey, I have some complications stage all the way to like, this is really life-threatening. So this team from researchers, um, it's a combination team from ETH Zurich as well as EMPA, which is the Swiss federal lab for material science. Checks out. They're working together 
to create this hydrogel patch, right? So it, it's made of this biocompatible hydrogel material that can soak up the digestive juices if they happen to leak. So that, that one helps with the first pain point we talked about where like current patches dissolve when when the leaks at the stitches start to become present. And then the second half of that is built in non-electronic sensors. And I didn't even like really know that that exists, right? Non-electronic sensors that you can somehow read from outside of the body. That's to me is like one of the most compelling parts of this entire solution. Absolutely. And I, I think we should get into the sauce now. So like it's it's a two-parter, like we, we got a two-parter problem. So we're going to have a two-parter solution. The, the hydrogel is probably part one. And um, it's amazing in and of itself. Like you mentioned, hydrogel allows you, it's mostly made of water and it is able to absorb a lot of liquids very well. So that's great. And it also cross links with the tissue that you're trying to patch up, which means it has a better adherence to the surrounding area versus something like plaster that you're just kind of like slobbing on there or even like the stitching that's you're, you're using to suture someone up. Yep. Great. Now there's the detection side. And this kind of reminds me of, um, if you remember back in the day, Dan, we used to like read tons of uh, papers about different nanomaterials. One of the popular ones was gold nanoparticles that glowed red. And they work like these heat seeking missiles for cancer cells, which means that they would bind themselves to this material and it would allow doctors to use scanning technology to pick up and know exactly where cancer cells are. Well, this is kind of operating in the same way. You have this hydrogel that's actually infused with, with salts that react to changes in pH and specific enzymes that are also found in the digestive tract, which means that if there is a leakage, you're going to start seeing some reactions happening in the hydrogel. And the best way to pick this up originally was through ultrasound. So like um, if you've seen like movie shows of like pregnant women doing the little scanty scan, that's essentially what they're talking about. But as this technology has advanced, they're also able to do CT scans which are pretty normal for a patient in the hospital, like, you know, very routine if you're doing an operation of this sort. And they have this, you guys got to check out the article. They have this picture of what like a good patch looks like and what a bad patch looks like. And even to the eye of someone who got a B in biology and is definitely not a doctor, you're like, oh, that's a good one because it's a full ring. That's you a say bad that one. like someone with experience. I'm, I'm doing my best, you know, you got to fake it till you make it. Um. Uh, but yeah, like the bad one has a hole in it and the good one doesn't have a hole in it. So it couldn't have been easier to tell the difference. I, I'm with you, man. I, can, I had similar takeaways here. I was like, there's two main ingredients in this secret sauce. The first part of it is this patch is made of materials that can soak up the fluid. Um, that's, that's a big deal right there, right off the bat, because it addresses the initial pain point we talked about where the current patches actually dissolve when there's too much gastric fluid. So mm-hmm. in this case, it's presenting preventing the fluid from leaking all inside the body and causing peritonitis. And then that's also the life-threatening scenario when the gastric fluid leaks all inside the body and causes a blood infection. So it prevents the life-threatening outcomes from happening right off the bat, which is awesome. But even more so than that, we've got the second aspect here, which is like detectability. It improves the detectability of these leaks. Um, And I was super compelled by this. So I dove even deeper um, than what the article that we got linked. I started like opening the technical papers and trying to crack out and just figure out exactly what happened, what's happening Mm -hmm. here. So um, we said they've got like some combination of like salts and proteins in there that react to the changes in acidity. Um, it's a combination of salts and this thing called tantalum oxide, um, which is insoluble and it is specifically designed to react with the acidity from the gastric fluid. So if you think about it, you've got like stomach acid inside you. Um, it reacts with the stomach acid and generates bubbles of CO2 inside the body. Um, at first I was like, dude, that must be painful to have like bubbles of CO2 floating about inside you. But the CO2 actually gets trapped by the hydrogel too. So what we're able to detect from outside the body is actually when a reaction happens, some bubbles pop up inside the hydrogel and that creates a structural difference that can be detected from outside the body. Like you mentioned, using either a CT scan um, or an ultrasound imaging, that's super valuable because it doesn't matter which hospital you're at. It's more likely that like the hospital you're at has either one CT scan or ultrasound imaging. It's not the type of scenario where um, you go to most hospitals and they don't have either. So it gives a lot of flexibility to doctors trying to do a quick triage and understand, are we having the leakage there? Um, but the part that was like the cherry on top for me on top of this Sunday with all the secret sauce is the fact that they connected this using computer vision to a Python algorithm um, that can algorithmically evaluate the CT scans and the ultrasound images to tell whether or not there has been leakage on the gut. So in addition to like 
like you said, even if you're a B minus student in biology, it's easy for you to look at the image and determine that. They've also created a way to connect this to an algorithm. So we don't even have to trust your poor, ju- poor judgment, man. The computer can tell us right off the bat. Thank God for taking me out of the equation. <laughs> Weight off my shoulders. No, but honestly, it's, it's pretty compelling that they can yeah. pull human error almost completely out of the equation there. They've got a way to algorithmically evaluate it. To me, it's like they've got all the reliability of having an electronic sensor there to detect what's going on, except that there's actually no wires. It's non-invasive. Um, there's no electronics involved. You've just got a computer that's able to non-invasively read the physical sensors that are inside the body. I mean, you know how passionate I am about automation, so I'm not going to go into that tangent. But like quickly, high level thinking about it, it makes total sense that, again, the doctors are doing the best that they can while they're doing the operation. And once they patch it up, it's great that we can like offload that monotonous yet very critical work of figuring out like, is this patient okay? to someone that doesn't need to be a surgeon, right? Like you have the patch that's figuring out if there's a leak and then you have the algorithm that's running and analyzing the results to be like, yes, there's a leak or no, there's no leak. And this bleeds very nicely into the kind of so what section. Like, you know, they, they've made these changes, they've done all this, but what does this translate to in terms of like impact to the patients or this process? Yep. So we've already kind of covered the doctor side, makes your life easier, gives them more, more of a coverage in terms of, you know, how, how, how much insight they have into the patient's progress post patch up. But on the patient side, you also have, you can go in and be more comfortable because there's a reduced risk of complications with a surgery like this. You have probably a reduced um, number of days that you have to stay at the hospital because now they're not just kind of winging it and hoping that you're okay and nothing happens in the next two or three days. You just kind of know that you're good. And If needed, you can get a routine checkup like the next week or something like that to make sure that the CT scans are still looking good. And then probably most important to our um, American listeners, uh, reduced healthcare costs. Um, You know, those hospital bills can rack up and being able to, again, streamline these processes allows us to use less of the doctor's time, use less of the hospital resources, get you home quicker. And we're doing that with this approach without compromising on anything. In fact, we're making the process better for you, safer for you, cheaper for you. So it's mostly a win around the board, right? Like it makes everybody happy. No, I agree there, man. And I particularly want to dive into the part where you talk about um, decreasing the length of the hospital stays, which mm-hmm. reduces the healthcare costs in general, right? Obviously reduced complications is the goal, but the byproduct of this being the fact that people might not have to stay in the hospital as long is a big deal. Um, I looked and there are like pretty decent home ultrasound machines. Um, like imagine your doctor sends you home with an ultrasound machine. They cost less than a thousand dollars. So I imagine something that a hospital could stock a couple of them, lend them out to the patient to take them home. And the patient can like, I don't know, use a mobile app on their phone with this algorithm to look at the ultrasound imaging yeah. that they got themselves to determine and make sure, you know, you don't have to come in for a checkup a week later. You can monitor at home every 12 hours if you want to be sure that there aren't any complications. And you can do it at home with this ultrasound machine, snap a photo of it, put it through this photo algorithm, and then it can tell you whether or not your your sutures are leaking or not. If they are, you can get it addressed really quickly, but hopefully it doesn't happen at all, or it it happens much less frequently. And then the the consequences that happen as a result of that are a lot less minimal, right? We don't have this 20% chance of dying once your intestines start to leak. That's a great hot take. I totally agree with you. And again, like safety and health is the most important thing. I think anyone, you know, if you offer them more money or their health, they're always going to take their health. But after you know you're okay, um, the next thing that's going to hit you is the hospital bill and no one wants to be in debt like that. So reducing that and coming up with ways, again, with automation technology that we can make people's lives easier and affordable opens this kind of care up to a lot of people and makes those that are already, you know, experiencing this issue and have a need for this kind of process being less of a burden both both like on the risk side and on the um time slash cost uh investment side so i don't know it makes me happy but obviously like everything we talk about we want to know is this stuck in academia or is it making its way to us what's happening here is are we going to see this in our lifetime and it looks like this research has actually generated a whole lot of interest so these folks are now looking into the next steps of what it means to advance this application in practice. What I think that means is, you know, we've theoretically proved out this um, this product in a laboratory setting. Now we have to do human trials. That's typically the way it goes based on my understanding of 
pharmaceuticals and the medical industry. But I don't know. I'm hopeful. I think they've been able to demonstrate the value of this pretty well. And um, I wouldn't be surprised, again, if we see this in the not so distant future, making yeah, its way into I, the hospitals. I want to like temper everyone's expectations, though. Not so distant future, especially in the medical realm, could be a years. long time. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure of the average like time from laboratory model all the way through to human trials and then to, to mass acceptance. It probably depends a lot that you know depending on the field that this this is tending to address but i will say um they have tested in a live piglet model and proved themselves out so it's not just like in vitro they've done it in vivo in a live piglet model so i'm hoping that through these next steps in medical practice with the interest that they've garnered in industry they're able to accelerate this you know out into the field again the whole point at least for you and i of being technologists of being engineers is to help improve people's lives, right? Mm-hmm. To do things that make an impact in the world. Um, it would be really awesome if this team from ETH Zurich um, and EMPA can get their, you know, get their developments out into the world quickly um, and save a lot of people who are experiencing these complications due to stomach-related surgeries. So, uh, you know, it's a problem that I didn't know a ton about at the surface, but I after doing either. research for this, it, it's striking to me how impactful this could possibly be. I'm with you, man. And look, you know, um, Neuralink did the pig testing too so you should probably expect this the same time that you expect Neuralink. how about that that's that's the general timeline that will suffer folks yeah we can put computers in our brain faster than we can patch leaks in our stomach <laughs> yeah before we wrap it up you want to do a quick like eli5 wrap up in 30 seconds to a minute just to like you know get those juices all together pun not intended yeah that's a bad pun there man but i tried i tried all right, let, let's do it so i didn't know this you probably didn't know this but in stomach or intestine su- surgeries, there's leaks at the surgeries that are pretty frequent. It happens in more than 5% of surgeries. And then in 20% of those cases, it's really life-threatening. So there's a big problem here. Um, current technology isn't really great at solving it. These patches either dissolve when gastric fluid touches it, um, or as soon as the abdominal cavity is closed, doctors can't tell what's going on. So these researchers from ETH Zurich made a patch out of this special hydrogel material that's put on these abdominal surgery wounds after the stitches are put into place helps seal the wounds after surgery, but it's also got this really cool sensor technology built in that can help doctors tell if dangerous leaks are happening. The goal here is then to help detect when leaks are happening, prevent them from getting bad, and then save people's lives who would otherwise be experiencing this life-threatening stomach leaks after surgeries. Money. Absolutely money. There's so money you don't even know it. There we go. Swingers reference for everyone. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, you got to watch it. By the way, just realized, second to last episode was also wearables, and it was a wearable that was also a patch. There's a trend happening there. We're patching it up, people. Uh, that was a good pun. I got I to gotta get up to your level, man. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and enduring our puns. And until next time, I guess. See you then. Yep, see you.